Have you been struggling trying to find the right decaf espresso or challenges brewing? Don't worry, you're not the only one. I've made hundreds and hundreds of decaf coffee shots, and so I'm here today to share with you some basic and also some not so common tips to help you brew better decaf. Tip number one, know how caffeine affects you. Sounds basic, but actually it affects everyone quite differently. Caffeine usually takes somewhere around 45 minutes to take effect, and that's why sometimes you hear you can have a cup of coffee and then take a power nap beforehand. Uh, but once it kicks in, the half-life of caffeine is around five to seven hours, and that's what studies show affecting most people within the first five hours is the strongest effect. But the interesting fact is that that's just the half-life of caffeine. In fact, it stays in your system for a very long time. So if you had a big shot of espresso and that had around 200 milligrams of caffeine, after five hours, you'd be somewhere around 100 milligrams. And at 10 hours, you get it down to 50 milligrams. And at 15 hours, you'd be at 25 and so on. So actually, it takes quite a bit of time to leave your body. And so this is where the first tip really comes to play. You really have to know yourself. What I found for myself personally is that depending on how relaxed I am and how stressed I am, is how much uh, the caffeine will impact me. Um, if I'm really relaxed, I find that I can actually drink a couple shots of espresso later in the afternoon. It doesn't bother me. Second thing is, how do you get rid of caffeine in your body? How do you get rid of the effects? And can you do things like running or drinking more water? Unfortunately not. Uh, while it may help, the amount of impact it will have is quite minor, if nothing at all. So unfortunately, it's just about time. I did read one study saying that vegetables like broccoli contain an enzyme that help break down caffeine. Uh, but if you're eating broccoli, it takes around eight hours to digest and process. And so unless if you're making broccoli smoothies for breakfast with your morning shot, it's probably not going to help you out. So again, caffeine affects us all differently and, and really just getting to, to know your body and know how caffeine affects you. Well, most uh, people get uh, affected by caffeine the most in the, the first five hours, you may be different. And so depending on your schedule, depending on your body, you may be able to have a shot of normal espresso at 6 p.m. or 10 p.m. So you know, just, just get familiar with your body and how caffeine affects you. All right, tip number two is about good tamping and get the basic tools. If you have the Breville Barista Pro or something similar, two tools I recommend, very cheap, probably about $30 or less, is a WDT tool and a scale. So the WDT tool is really great in terms of help breaking up that clumps and getting more consistency in your grind, especially for the Breville Barista Pro or the Express. The grinder isn't that great. I, I tend to get a lot of clumps, especially in some of the darker roasts that I get. And so this really helps even out the, the grinds. I've found a huge improvement. I have a bottomless Poro filter, which is optional, but I think a great way to help diagnose your shots. After I started doing WDT technique, uh, I found that, um, my my channeling and just my shot flavors they improved uh, noticeably so definitely recommend it you can make one at home there's a ton of videos out there just take a look uh, or you can just buy one off amazon or a similar site they're usually around ten ten dollars or less um there's a few different tools that are out there you know my suggestion is get the fine ones the the fine needles i found that to actually be quite noticeably better i started off with the bigger tool uh, one that you can see here looked great i thought it was great because i have young kids i didn't want them just had this like bad imagination of them poking each other with the tool but actually i found it wasn't working uh how i wanted it to i was still getting some channeling and so i wanted to try uh, a different one that had smaller needles the one that you can see here and actually got noticeably better results and so i guess i'm sacrificing my kids health for better coffee but better coffee wins So once you distribute your grounds with the WDT tool, uh, then you need to uh, tamp your grinds. Um, I have a distributor here you can see. I've actually done some testing with and without it. I, I haven't seen significant differences, and so I'm actually not recommending it as a must-have tool, but I, I think it, you know, they're still fairly cheap, and I think it's worth uh, getting one to try out for yourself and see what you uh, get for your results. Um, with the tamp, just one quick tip, uh, leave it in after you've tamped and then you can see 
uh, how uh, straight the angle is um, and if you need to adjust your technique at all. Again, there's a lot of great videos out there on how to tamp. Uh, now, as I'm recording this and uh, looking back at my videos, I'm really realizing, uh, talking big game about uh, my tamping and distribution technique, uh, but in reality, I still got quite a bit of channeling going on as I'm looking at the slow-mo, so uh, I think this is just kind of an endless journey to get better shots, uh, but uh, let me know. You're, you see my technique, so I'd love to hear your comments uh, in the chat below. Uh, second tool is a scale. Um, again, this is basics, uh, so you can skip through this if you already have it and know it, but it really helps uh, you measure your uh, your grinds, your uh, your ex espresso output, um, and just to drive a lot more consistency and just like diagnose your shots better as well. Uh, again, a lot of great videos out there in terms of uh, how to use the scale to measure your, your ratios. Uh, again, you don't need to spend a lot of money on a scale. Uh, you want to make sure that it has accuracy to a tenth of a gram. Uh, the scale that I had here is uh, less than uh, $30. All right, tip number three. Get to know your beans and, and know your flavor profile. Now, if you're coming here to find out what is the best decaf bean, sorry to disappoint, I can't, I can't recommend it to you. And that's because just like beer or wine, there's no best beer or wine. It's your personal preference, what you like. Yes, there may be some more popular ones, but everyone's preferences are different. And so actually, if you haven't had time to really understand the different flavors of coffee, again, this is such a deep topic, but highly recommend you get to know your flavors. Do you like more nutty, more chocolate flavors, low acidity? Do you like more fruity flavors or something in between? Uh, again, there's so much that you can explore and just all the different flavors of coffee. It's just a fascinating topic, something that I've recently spent a lot more time to appreciate. Um, and, you know, if, if again, if you're not familiar with this, suggest going to your local coffee shop or respected brewer and, and just try out some of the different types of roast from light roast, medium roast, dark roast. Uh, note the different flavor profiles of the beans and, and just see what you like. Now, from a decaf perspective, most of the over-the-shelf um, coffee that you can buy is usually dark roasted. It seems to be more popular, just like for beer, uh, lager tends to be more popular for for coffee. It seems to be dark roast. You know, most people, uh, I guess, prefer less acidity and more of the dark roast flavors. Maybe more of the nutty, the chocolate, or or other darker uh, flavors that you get from the roast. But also try exploring some of the specialty roasters. Uh, I find the specialty roasters try to do uh, generally a medium or medium dark roast. Uh, try to get some more of the fruity flavor, sometimes like a, a jam, uh, a fruit jam type of flavor, and so that can be really uh, fun to explore. Haven't found uh, many light roast uh, decaf, seems like decaf is, is better roasted from what I've read, uh, but again, a, a lot of fun uh, worth uh, exploring. Um, I, I do find that, um, and you may have noticed this already if you've been trying to brew, a lot of the over-the-counter uh, dark roast, I mean, they're just so bitter, just like overly roasted. So I find that to be a big challenge. Um, and some of the specialty roasters that I've tried, it's like either or, right? You get something that's like overly roasted or like extremely sour, like too sour that you just can't drink. Um, so we'll get into that into the next uh, tip. But uh, again, just know what your taste profile is like. What do you enjoy? Uh, and have a lot of fun with it. So last point on, on the beans is there are different ways to actually make decaf coffee. There's around three or four main methods. Uh, there's a direct solvent method, uh, which actually uses some, some chemicals to extract the caffeine. Uh, obviously something that's not preferred even though the FDA says it's approved, but it's the cheapest one, and so that's what you'll, you'll most commonly see. Um, the other one is a carbon dioxide method, which uh, supposedly is uh, very healthy. Um, but also expensive to make, so usually you won't see this unless if there's like the more popular decaf brews, like I know Illy uses this and they claim it to be the best method to um, make decaf coffee. Uh, the other one that you see more common, especially in like specialty roasters, is the Swiss water method um, or the mountain water method, uh, which is a very safe way to extract caffeine as well, more expensive than obviously the, the direct solvent. So uh, if you are buying beans, I would take a look at this and you know try to avoid uh, the solvent based method for producing decaf. Uh, now one thing I was trying to find out like which one of these methods actually make the best uh, decaf coffee and actually it's not easy to find. Um, it, there's no consensus on this and, and so you're just gonna have to go and taste for yourself. Uh, there's not been a certain bean by a certain roaster that has tried all three methods 
uh, from what I could find at least, uh, testing them out and seeing which one uh, produced the best flavor profile. All right, tip number four, break the rules. All right, now with decaf, I have found it to be just so different in terms of the way I've been brewing it compared to uh, normal coffee that, again, you're just going to have to break the rules. I'm sure you've read the basics. Again, uh, ratios, uh, 18 grams in, 36 grams out, somewhere between 25 to 30 or 35 seconds. Again, break these rules. Now with decaf, again, I was saying before, there's a lot of roasts that are extremely dark. I found it to be too bitter. And so if I, um, you know, Starbucks example, their decaf, if I take their uh, espresso decaf or their um, Komodo Dragon decaf, I actually like that decaf, not too bad, but if I just do like kind of a normal shot of around uh, 30 seconds or so, I find it to be extremely bitter. Um, I found it to be pretty much cigarettes dipped in tar and water. It was, it, it's gross. I couldn't drink it. Um, so, so play around with it. I actually, you can see a shot here. It looks super messy. I actually pull this shot in 20 seconds. Um, with the full 10 second pre-infusion, um, went super fast, but actually tasted significantly better than what you would say a normal uh, shot would be. Um, I've also found with some of the other dark roses, um, you know, again, do that long pre-infusion uh, as long as possible on the, on the Breville, it's 10 seconds. I've actually played around with some of the real dark roasts like Starbucks. I've actually run like two pre-infusions. So I run it, stop it, and then run it again. Uh, and found that actually works pretty well. So just like have fun, um, try breaking some of the rules. I think you'll be happy with some of the results. Um, other thing with dark roast is uh, grind coarser, not finer. A lot of times you always hear grind fine or grind finer. No, I found coarser, bigger doses. I have a bigger basket, um, 22 gram basket. So run coarser, run it fast. Um, again, uh, because it's a very dark roast, you don't need to run it long. So more of a ristretto ratio, like a one to one ratio, I think is better. And you can always add water later on, um, do lower temps, uh, you know, for again, the very dark roast, I always uh, put it down to the lowest temp possible on my Breville. Now for beans that are like your medium roast, a lot of times I find this with, uh, some of the, um, you know, the specialty coffees, extremely sour. I remember when I first got my machine, I was my first uh, uh, bean I was brewing was a decaf and I thought like the machine was broken. It was just coming out sour. I thought I was like doing something like really bad with my, my technique. And actually I found out it's just the bean. So sometimes, you know, when you're trying different decaf beans, like just be aware that sometimes there's just bad beans out there and, and you're just gonna have to keep searching for the one that you like. Um, with sour, uh, shots uh, again, uh, just like the typical rules follow here, but you know, just to go through a couple of the tips that I found is one um, grind finer. Uh, I tend to do more of a, a lungo ratio, a one to three ratio, um, because the longer you you run it, again, then you get more of the um, the bitter flavors uh, rather than the sour, which come early in the shot. Uh, do hot temperature. Uh, that definitely helps on the Breville, so I pump it up to the max. Uh, some other not so common methods that um, you know, I'll just give you a tip on is is a dump shot. So if you haven't heard of this, it's basically uh, you just let the first like second or two of the shot just kind of dump into the drip tray, and then just then you put your shot glass under um, under the brew head, under the pour filter. Now that seems a bit weird, but if you um, know the basis uh, basics of espresso, again. Uh, the first uh, few seconds or so are, are like the sour part of the extraction. Then you get into kind of the sweet part. And then at the very end, you tend to get the bitter uh, flavors. And so uh, if you have a really extremely sour coffee and you don't want to like throw it away, uh, try the dump shot. I found that it's drinkable. Uh, a lot of the cases, it doesn't have that full, I guess, body uh, of like a typical espresso. But, you know, give it a try. Uh, it's worth uh, breaking the rules and having a little bit of fun. Um, the other thing that you can try too is just put a pinch of baking soda into your shot glass, just like a small amount that can actually help. Um, it's also good for your stomach uh, in terms of just reducing the acidity. Um, so give it a try. Uh, not my preference. I wouldn't recommend the, you know, the dump shot or the baking soda, but you know, maybe you have some beans that are just too sour for your flavor. You don't want to waste them. Um, give that a try. Last tip on sour shots here is, uh, which is not so common as commonly talked about at least, is check your water. Uh, some water, is, you know, depending on where you, you live and the quality, if, if the alkalinity is very low, your, your, uh, your coffee can actually taste quite vinegary uh, or sour. 
Uh, so this is simple to check. Just get a pH test. It's very cheap. Um, and then you can see if you have any problems with your water. If it's on either end of the scale, it can actually be uh, quite, a, quite a, a challenge for making good coffee. And so my last tip for you is just change your relationship around decaf. I found that uh, just something is part of the the process uh, when they when they make decaf, it just takes away some of the flavor that you would normally get with uh, regular beans. And so I found some great uh, decaf beans, but I've also managed to dial in my expectations. Be a coffee geek, not a coffee snob. And uh, just like whiskeys, uh, you have single malts and blended whiskeys. I can enjoy both. Both are good, but very different. Uh, sometimes diff uh, drank in different ways, right? So single malt, I'll drink neat, uh, blended, maybe I'll mix, uh, add soda, add ice. And so I think as you manage your expectations around decaf, uh, you can really start to enjoy it as well. And so that's it. Hopefully these were some helpful tips. Uh, let me know your thoughts in terms of what beans are best, uh, what you found in terms of dialing in decaf. I still got a lot to learn, so I would love to hear from y'all. Thanks, folks.